Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and uh, the other day you guys watched me. I, was, I thought I was going to make a ball to go on each end of the handle on my arbor press, and then I couldn't remember how I had made a ball back in the 70s, and I probably freehanded it or something. But I remember I did make a, a two-inch stainless steel trailer hitch ball for somebody, and. Uh, like I said, I couldn't remember how I did it, so I decided it must be just about time for me to go ahead and make my own ball turning attachment. I've watched people on tons of different channels with their idea of how to do it right, and I come up with a, the method that I think is the best, the one I like the best. So that's what we're going to do. And this is going to be a, a long drawn out project. It'll probably be two, three, maybe four parts. I don't know. But I'm sure it'll be drawn out. And I'll try a new method of uploading the next, another section of it every day or two, you know, until I get it finished. That's kind of like Mr. Pete does. And, if, you know, if Mr. Pete does it, it's got to be good, right? I know I always, I always go look at whatever Mr. Pete's done. When I want to do something new that I haven't done yet, I go look on Mr. Pete's website and uh, find out how he says to do it <laughs> and then I come back and uh, I do it myself sort of like uh, going to check the, the the machinery's handbook you know only a lot better did you guys see one of these things before this is a, this is a handy invention uh, you ever need to maybe change the number of holes in the belt maybe you're getting too much abdominal muscle and you need a let the belt out or something and you take a pocket knife and you turn it back and forth and cut your finger or, or you make a ragged hole in the belt. This is a hole punch for leather. Makes all kind of different sizes of holes and uh, I got it off of eBay for I don't know about 12 bucks so no more sloppy belt holes for me. Alright let's uh, let's get on with the, with the video here and uh, see if we can make a ball turner. And you guys know where it's going to start. Yep, this project is starting on the bandsaw. i got to cut off a piece of uh, stainless. Of course, I'm not going to film cutting through three inches of stainless steel. But that's liable to take me quite a while. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll put it over there in the lathe chuck and we'll try to make something out of it. That took about an hour longer than forever cut that off but now we've got it cut off we got it in the lathe and this end of it actually not the end uh, that I cut this is the one that was originally on it and it wobbles quite a bit so I'm going to have to face it off and get it trued up if you look at that it looks like I don't know adventure throwing that thing up the way it's wobbling around there so just take a little nap well I made a big pile of slightly gold colored chips here but uh, that thing smoothed up pretty good and I've had enough for today you can see that it's not wobbling anymore and I'm going to call it, call it quits until tomorrow and then we'll come back out and we'll turn it around and face the other end of it off and then get busy making it into something. Okay, so I faced off the other side and I've turned it around here in the chuck and I got it in less than about a half a thousand to run out and time to face off this end and then we'll make the hole in the center for the uh, piece that's under the under the compound here to go up inside of and uh, then we'll be uh, approaching the time to uh, make the next piece. So uh, the hard part's the, the cutting off with the bandsaw. So I know that there's another piece going to have to come off the bandsaw.
be a lot easier to clean up this side than the other side. And uh, instead of speeding up the video, I'm just going to show you the start, and then I'll come back and uh, make video of the finish. It's just going to be a lot of back and forth like this. And that's not very interesting. So I'll put you to sleep until we'll right at the square end. Alright, so a nice cleanup cut here. Just uh, make it smooth. We'll start from the middle to come out. I need two of these hockey pucks, one to go on the bottom and one to hold my tool holder on the top. So, undoubtedly I'm going to have to, you know, do it twice. That didn't clean up, so I'll have to uh, feed it back in. We'll put it in reverse and feed it in. Should get it nice and shiny and straight. No, not like that. Maybe go in enough to touch. There we go. That'll clean it up. Make that bread and look out of it. It may not have been overly flat. this I guess I might as well get on to sawing off the uh, the other hockey puck so I'll need it all right so that means you guys get to rest because it takes a really long time for my saw to cut off a three inch piece of stainless steel okay so I figured out a way to get around using two hockey pucks so I don't have to go and cut one off because that's that's a really time consuming thing. It took me three hours to cut this thing off. And uh, there's a, a post sticking up here under the compound that I can use to uh, be my center and turn around and circle on it. All I have to do is make the hole, you know, very close to the exact same size. And then we'll, we'll use it for the, uh, for the bearing. And then on the other side of this, I can slot it for my tool bit, and I think everything will come out just right. So let's give that a try. All right, so it's going to be more of this right on down into there. The bit now is starting to slip back in the chuck instead of the tailstock moving, so drilling this stuff and I'm sure the whole machining of this thing is going to be difficult. So I'm going to finish drilling the hole off camera because it's not an exciting thing to watch. Now I know you're not supposed to use an end mill for this, but it tends to make such a nice square bottom hole, okay? I've drilled this in about 
They're just a little bit past the, the distance I wanted to clear. And I'm going to make a nice flat bottom hole with this and then we'll see about putting a bigger drill bit in there or whether we just go right on to boring the thing. It's going to have to be a hole bigger than one inch. So that's a lot of cutting on this tough stuff. Maybe just a little bit deeper than I wanted. Let me try to remove that little burr that it's got on it there. No thing for deburring right here. Let's give it a shot. There, that's a lot better. Give me a better measurement. Six points, it's point six one two five, which is perfect because the little post there is six hundred thousandths tall, so it won't go through and let any crud get below it, and it'll, it'll do the job. All right, I'm gonna let you guys sleep a minute. All right, this is a nine sixteenths in mill, and the chuck accepted it. I'm thinking the chuck might even take a five eighths, so. I'm going to get as much metal out of here with this as I can before I use the boring bar. Okay, so we'll need uh, another <laughs> another end mill. See if see how large I can get the hole before I got to start with the boring bar because that's that's going to be a long job. Just boring the hole. There's no guarantee this chuck's going to accept a five eighths. No, it won't. I've hit the limit with the. Uh, end mills so now I got to set up for the boring bar take a little nap all right so I'm I'm doing the usual that you, that you do to get a big hole before you start boring I'm getting larger and larger drill bits I try to one inch there and it's just a little bit too big for the for stainless steel at least for making the first hole so I'm going to run a three quarter in there and get it yeah, eat out a little bigger then we'll find an one a little bit bigger than that and then the one inch you know and probably the one inch is where I'll stop all right I'm guess I'm guessing I might as well go ahead and just fight the rest of it with a with a boring bar not having much luck and the point of this thing is getting getting down into the bottom of the hole anyway so I think it's time to move on to the boring bar all right so now we're up to the process of slicing it out a, a few thousandths at a time and uh, that means starting way in there and working my way out to the outside vibration I'm not sure 
if it's just the one that's suited for this or if I should try to get a little bit larger one. I think I'll look around for a larger boring bar. Alright, I got a short fat carbide boring bar there. And I think he'll clean it up. One thing for sure is you and me can't both wash this at the same time. They stop from there, so I'm gonna bore on this while and then I'll if I think of another place to put the camera, I'll let you watch what's left. Okay, so all those drill bits left me with a cone-shaped hole. And I've just now got the hole straight all the way to the bottom. And I'm about 60 thousandths above one inch. Now that doing that's taking me over 20 minutes. So drilling this out the uh, next 400 and, and uh, 50 some odd thousandths is going to take a while. A lot longer than you're going to want to watch on... Uh, on the camera there and it's just going to be in and out, in and out, in and out, you know. That's all there is to it. Cut a while and measure, cut a while and measure. This stuff is is doable as long as I get a good cut at the beginning and, and just let it feed on in without slowing down. If you ever let off, you're in trouble. Alright, I just got do, through doing a spring cut. Got this nice little bit of Stainless, <clears throat> stainless steel wire from it. I should be in the neighborhood of 1 inch 480 thousandths. We're going for a 1 inch 498, 99 thousandths, something like that. And uh, so now's the time to double, double measure and all that. And for measuring, I'm using this nice uh, little plug gauge, I call it a plug gauge, I don't know, a snap gauge, snap gauge, that's what they're called. Okay. And then we will take this guy and give him a measure with a real micrometer, no more guesstimating. Alright, so that's 480 thousandths. Actually, one inch four hundred and eighty-nine thousandths. It didn't quite make it that the last thousand. So that means from here on in, very light cuts. I've got uh, a stop set up. Let me zoom back just a little bit. See, wrong way. Zoom back. And you can see I've got a stop set up down here, so that I go the same depth every every time I'm in there so I don't want you uh, but I don't want to keep my mind on the camera while I'm cutting so I'm going to just shut you guys off till I make that last few thousands okay here we are just about to taste the pudding this thing's got to fit over this pot right here without being sloppy and I've got it in the still in the lathe chuck pull it out of there and and see if it fits over it without being sloppy. If it does we'll be happy and if it doesn't we'll be unhappy. Well it's too tight right yet. So it's got to come back up off of that Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just lift it back off. Mm -hmm. Ah. All right. It's still just a little bit tight. Thank goodness. I was scared for a minute there that I would have gone over. And I looked at the measurements twice and measured everything again, and, and I had hope I hadn't gone over. I didn't, so there you go. It's a shame that I don't have another another lathe that I can cut this on and bring it over and measure it here real easy, but I don't. So I'll put it all back together and go back in there and 
we move about another half a thousand, something like that, and then we'll measure it again. So you guys take a nap. Okay, I made more very careful cuts, and I'm ready to check it again. All right, let's see if it fits. Almost. I didn't take much off, about a thousandth, so maybe, maybe not even that much, considering how how tight it feels here. So uh, another another try at it. That's within, I think, a half a thousandth. I don't believe that I could have got a better fit. Seems to kind of have a little suction when you try to pull it up off of there. So, I believe that's, that's just the best I can do. It's close enough that you can't put it on crooked or it won't, won't fit. Ah! Dang it. Anyway, once it's on there, it turns freely, so. Pretty sure that it's an acceptable size. There. You see what I mean? It, it turns freely. So, clearance is right. It's just. I'm not very good at putting it on there straight. Now then what we've got to do is we've got to cut us a slot through here for the tool that's going to stick up there and cut the balls. And we've got to cut a hole in here for the handle. And we need, I believe, holes for uh, putting little grub screws in there. I'm not certain that they're really all that needed, but, well, before I get to the end, I'll make my mind up whether I'm going to put them in there or not. So, I think it's on to the milling machine now. Well, it seems like Bubba got to having some problems with, uh, well, actually with this bottom man, he was having some hemorrhoid problems, and he went to the doctor to do something about it. The doctor said, well, he said, I'm going to give you this prescription here for, for suppositories. He says this calls from 1 in the morning and one at night and uh, Bubba says all right he went off to get the suppository and uh, so we come back after a week to the doctor and the doctor says well he said did that help you any Bubba says no he says uh, it didn't help me a bit he says I still can't hardly sit down the doctor said well I'm going to give you a, a prescription for stronger suppositories and he said I, this will call for one three times a day so Bubba says, all right. So he, he took off down, you know, the drugstore. After a week, he come back in to see the doctor. And the doctor says, well, he says, I, I bet you're a lot better now. Bubba says, heck no. He says, for all the good them things done me, I could have shoved them up my bleep. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.